Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're doing uh, Christian Martyrs, the Foxes Book of Martyrs, and we're in the early persecutions of the church. And uh, we're in the fifth persecu persecution commencing with Cerevus in AD 192. Cerevus, having been recovered from a severe fit of sickness by a Christian, became a great favour of the Christians in general. But the prejudice and fury of the ignorant multitude prevailing obsolete laws were put in execution against the Christians. The progress of Christianity alarmed the pagans and they revived the state of calumny of placing accidental misfortunes to the account of its professors, AD 192. <coughs> but though the persecution malice raged, yet the gospel shone with resplendent brightness and firm <coughs> as an impenetrable rock withstood the attacks of the boisterous enemies with success. Tertullian, who lived in this age, informs us that if the Christians had collectively withdrawn themselves from the Roman territories, the empire would have been greatly depleted. <coughs> Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyons, was born in Greece and received both a polite, polite and Christian education. <coughs> it is generally supposed that the account of the persecutions that Lyons was written by himself. He succeeded the martyr of Pythi the Pathinius as Bishop of Lyons and ruled his diocese with great propriety. <coughs> he was a great opposer of heresies in general and about AD 187 he wrote a celebrated tract against heresy. Victor the Bishop of Rome wanting to impose the keeping of Easter there in preference to other places and occasion some disorders among the Christians. In particular Irenaeus wrote him a synodical epistle in the name of Gaelic churches, the zeal in favour of Christianity pointed him out as an object of resentment to the emperor and in AD 202 he was beheaded. The persecutions now extended to Africa, many were martyred in that quarter of the globe, the most particular of whom we shall mention, Perpetua, a married lady of about 22 years. Those who suffered with her were Felicius, a married lady, big with child at the time of her being apprehended and Revacatus, Cacatum of Carthage, and a slave. The name of the other prisoners destined to suffer from this occasion were Saturnius, Secundulus, and Sato. On the day appointed for their execution, they were led to the amphitheatre. Sato, Saturnius, and Revacatus were ordered to run the gauntlet between the hunters, or such as the care of the wild beasts, the hunters being drawn up in two ranks, they ran between and were severely lashed as they passed. Felicitus and Perpetua were stripped in order to be thrown to a mad bull, which made his first attack upon Perpetua and stunned. He then darted to Felicius and gored her dreadfully, but not killing them. The executioner did that office with a sword. Revocatus and Sator were destroyed by wild beasts. Saturnius was beheaded and Secundulus died in prison. These executions were in the year 205 on May 8th and the 8th of March. Cecilia, a young lady of good family in Rome, was married to a gentleman named Valerian. She converted her husband and brother who were beheaded and the Maximus, or officer who led them to execution, becoming their convert, suffered the same fault. The lady was placed naked in a scolding bath, having continued there a considerable time. Her head was struck off with a sword in AD 22. Callistus, Bishop of Rome, was martyred in AD 224, but the manner of his death is not recorded. An urban Bishop of Rome met the same fate AD 232. The sixth persecution under Maximus, AD 235. AD 235 was the time of Maximus. In Cappadocia, the president, Ceremonius, did all he could to exterminate the Christians from that province. The principal persons who perished under the reign were Pontinius, Bishop of Rome, Anteros, Grecian, his successor, who gave offence to the government by collecting the acts of the martyrs, Pacius uh, and Caritus, Roman senators with all their families, and many other Christians. Uh, Simplinius Senator Calipodius, a Christian minister thrown into the Tiber, Martin, a noble, beautiful virgin, and Hippolytus, a Christian prelate, tied to wild horse and dragged into till he expired. 
The seventh persecution under Decius AD 249. This was occasioned partly by the hatred he bore to his predecessor Philip, who was deemed a Christian, and partly to his jealousy concerning the amazing increase of Christianity, where the heathen temples began to be forsaken and the Christian churches thronged. These reasons stim uh, stimulated Decius to attempt the very extirpation of the name of Christian, and it was unfortunate for the gospel that many errors had about this time crept into the church. The Christians were at variance with each other, self-interest divided those whom social love ought to have united, and the virulent surprise occasioned a variety of factions. The heathen in general were ambitious to enforce the imperial decrees upon the occasion, and looked upon the murder of a Christian as a merit to themselves. The martyrs upon this occasion were innumerable, but the principle we shall give some account of. Fabian, the Bishop of Rome, was the first person of eminence who felt the severity of this persecution. The deceased Emperor Philip had a, an account of his integrity, committed his treasure to the care of this good man. But Decius, not finding as much as avarice made him expect, determined to wreak his vengeance on the good prelate. He was accordingly seized, and on the 20th of January, AD 250, he suffered decapitation. Nicomachus, uh, being brought before the proconsul as a Christian, was ordered to pay pagan idols. Nicomachus replied, I cannot pay the respect to devils which is only due to the Almighty. This speech so much enraged the proconsul that Nicomachus was put to the rack. After enduring the torment for a time, he recounted, but scarcely had he given this proof of his frailty than he fell into the greatest agonies, dropped down on the ground, and expired immediately. Denisi, a young woman of only 16 years of age, who beheld this terrible judgment, suddenly exclaimed, unhappy wretch, why would you buy a moment's ease at the expense of a miserable eternity? Optimus, hearing this, called to her, and Denisia, De avowing herself to be a Christian, she was beheaded by order soon after. Andrew and Paul, two companions of Nica. Machus, the martyr, A.D. 251, suffered martyrdom by stoning and expired calling on their blessed Redeemer. Alexander and Epacius of Alexandria were apprehended for being Christians and confessing the accusation were beat with staves, torn with hooks and length burnt in the fire. We are informed in a fragment preserved by Eusebius that four female martyrs suffered on the same day and at the same place, but not in the same manner, for they were beheaded. Lucian Marcion, two wicked pagans, though skillful magicians, became converts to Christianity. To make amends for their former errors, lived the lives of hermits and subsisted upon bread and water. And after some time spent in this manner, they became zealous preachers and made Many converts, the persecution, however, raging at this time, they were seized upon and carried before Sabaeus, the governor of Bithynia. Being asked why, by what authority they took upon themselves to preach, Lucian answered, the laws of charity and humanity obliged all men to ende ende endeavor the conversion of their neighbor and to do everything in their power to rescue them from the snare of the devil. Lucian, having answered in this manner, Marcion said that then conversion was by the same grace which was given St. Paul before a zealous persecutor of the church became a preacher of the gospel. The pro council finding that he could not prevail with them to renounce their faith, condemned them to be burnt alive, with sentence was soon after executed. Trifor and, Ris and, Trifo and uh, Rispicius, two eminent men, were seized as Christians and imprisoned at Nice. Their feet were pierced with nails, were dragged through the streets, scourged, torn with iron hooks, scorched with lighted torches, and at length beheaded, February AD 251. Agatha, a Sicily, Sicilian lady, was not more remarkable for her personal and acquired endearments than her piety. Her beauty was such that Quintian, governor of Sicily, became enamoured with her and made many attempts upon her chastity without success. In, edif in order to gratify his passions with the greater convenience he put the virtuous lady into the hands of Aprodicia, a very infamous and licentious woman. This wretch tried every artifice to win her to the desired prostitution, but found all her efforts were in vain, for her chastity was impregnable, and she well knew the virtue alone would procure true happiness.
I prefer Dyke acquainted continue with the inefficiency of her endeavours, who enraged to be foiled in his design, changed his lust into resentment. On a confessing that she was a Christian, he determined to gratify his revenge as he could not his passion. Pursuant to his orders, she was scourged, burnt with red hot hands, and torn with sharp hooks. Having borne these torments with admirable fortitude, she was next laid naked upon live coals, intermingled with glass, and then being carried back to prison, she expired on the 5th of February. 251 AD. I'm nearly in tears. I'm absolutely nearly in tears at this. This is just amazing. Cyril Bishop of Grotaya was seized by order of Lucia, the governor of that place, who never exhorted him to obey the imperial mandate. Performed the sacrifices and save his vulnerable, per vulnerable person from the destruction, for he was now 84 years of age. The good prelate replied that as he had long taught others to serve the souls, he should only think now of his own salvation. The word the prelate heard his sentence without emotion, walked cheerfully to the place of execution, and underwent his martyrdom with great fortitude. The persecution raged in no place more than the island of Crete, for the governor being exceedingly active in executing the imperial decrees that place streamed with precious blood, pious blood. Babylus, a Christian of liberal education, became bishop of Antioch in AD 237. On the demise of Zebinus, he acted within inimitable zeal and governed the church with honorable prudence during the most tempestuous times. The first misfortunes that happened at Antioch during his mission was the siege by Sapo, king of Persia, who having overrun all Syria took the plunder, the city among others, and used the Christian inhabitants with greater severity than the rest, but was soon totally defeated by Gordian. I'm going to just take a break for a few minutes. Uh, and uh, come back, but I can see it's very, very powerful. Uh, I'm just so moved by listening to these martyrs, and I hope it's an encouragement to you as it is to me.